Now, in our next story, we travel to another school, this one in Choctaw County, up to French Camp Academy. It's an interdenominational Christian boarding school for children from less than ideal situations. And all of the teachers and the house parents and the staff all work together to help these children succeed. Now, in our next story, we meet one of these very special individuals who went from being a veteran serving his country to serving bread. If you had told me even 12 years ago that at this time I would have baked over 135,000 loaves of bread, I'd have laughed at you. I, I, would have, I would have told you you were crazy. In some ways, I still don't consider myself a baker, but I bake. French Camp Academy is a school that deals with kids that come from troubled situations, not necessarily of their own creation. We try to deal with these situations one heart at a time. French Camp has been an organization that my family has supported throughout the years, and even my parents and grandparents have supported French Camp. I almost ended up here as a student at French Camp Academy because of some choices that I made. Uh, segue forward a few years, I uh, didn't do the best in college, and I ended up coming to French Camp as an intern and worked uh, from November of 1982 to May of 1983, and I did a little bit of everything. I went off into the military, was planning on doing four years, really didn't have any aspirations to do any longer than four years. I figured I'd get my college money and then get out. And after 24 years, I retired as a lieutenant commander. Came back, I called at that time, uh, my friend Jack Johnson said, uh, are, you, are you still interested in me coming back to French camp? Because he'd, he'd been after me for years. Anytime I'd stop by, when are you coming back? And so we came and we interviewed. And at the end of that process, they said, well, well, here's what we want to do. We're not going to offer you the job. We want you to go home and pray about it. And I did. And I called back a week later and uh, told Jack Johnson that we were, were ready to come. Our first year, we spent in the junior high boys dorm. And that year was probably the hardest year that I've ever experienced in my life, but it was also one of the most blessed. From that, we went to a boot camp-like facility that's out in the woods for kids who needed a second chance and I got to run that program for three years. And after that, I kind of was, I won't say I was burned out, but I was tired and I needed a break. And I told the staff of French Camp that, and at first what I did is I ended up going and working in the dining hall and just volunteering over there. So I worked over in the dining hall and was kind of uh, not real pleased with that. So I was, I was about to the point where I was ready just to step away from French Camp for a while and settle back and just enjoy my military retirement. And they walked up to me and they said, well, we got an opportunity we think you might be good at. And I looked at him, I said, okay, we want you to be the baker. And I went, really? You want me to be the what? I'm not a cook. I've never had any kind of experience of that. I'm not a professional cook, or I wasn't a professional cook at the time. I've never had any training. I said, we think you could do it. And so they introduced me to this wonderful lady. She was 75 years old at the time. Her name was Miss Annie Carter. And I tell you, I, I don't think I could have had a better teacher because she had the patience with this gruff old sailor that had uh, just come off of, the, off of a submarine. And uh, she took her time and taught me how to make bread her way. It was kind of interesting because they handed me this recipe and they said, this is how you make the bread. And I looked at them and okay. So I started watching what Miss Annie was doing and it wasn't matching the recipe that I had in my hand. So I said, okay, I need to put this away. I need to write down what she's doing. So over the period of a couple of weeks, uh, I, I basically came up with the recipe the way she made it. And what came from that is some pretty ugly bread. Uh, I had bread that was poofing out on the side and popping up in the middle and it was gooey on the inside because I would cook it too. And she says, just take your time. She says, it doesn't have to be perfect at first, just take your time. And over time, she it was about two months of working with her, she got my bread to where it needed to be. You stop and think about, you know, the 1700s, 1800s. Most people, if you, if you walked into a place, they didn't have a meal sit on the table if somebody came to your door, but they almost always had bread sitting on the counter. So one of the first things that somebody would do is they would break bread together. It was one of those things that um, broke down the barriers. 
So I, I came in and, and, and I, I befriended Miss, Miss Annie and I became her assistant. She knew that eventually I was going to replace her, but I put myself subservient to her and I let her teach me. And in a very short order, uh, we had almost a, a motherly son relationship that crossed cultures, it crossed age lines, um, it crossed color lines, and uh, she became one of my best friends. I tell you, that's one person who'll never come in my kitchen and have to pay for a loaf of bread. She will always have, you know, blank check as far as I'm concerned. I've been doing this since 2011, and through the years, I have developed uh, a couple of different types of bread. I do six different sourdoughs. I do a plain sourdough and a blue cheese and bacon, a feta cheese and spinach, a jalapeno pepper bread, a pimento cheese bread, and there was one other that I can't remember off the top of my head. I also developed two whole grain breads, which are the apple oatmeal bread and the uh, cranberry oatmeal bread. And I do a cinnamon raisin bread and cinnamon rolls. I know that the bread that I have on my table is going to go to somebody that either has supported French Camp Academy or is going to support French Camp Academy or is going to walk in my door and want to buy fresh bread. They don't even know that the money they're paying for the bread goes to support French Camp Academy or somebody uh, out in the community wants to send a loaf of bread to somebody in honor of them, so they give a donation to French Camp Academy. So every loaf of bread that I make is gonna go to somebody that in some way, shape, or form is going to support French Camp Academy and bottom line, my kids up the hill. A lot of times we have preconceived notions of what we're going to do with our lives. The bread baking was definitely not in my wheelhouse. It was not something I intended to do. It was not something I wanted to do. I went from being a, an, an executive assistant to a four-star admiral to being a baker. It's a little bit out of sync, but in the scheme of things, this is more important than what I did there. What I do, baking bread and ministering to these kids, whether it's through scouts, whether it's through music, whether it's through subbing a dorm, whether it's through going rafting with them, what I do with these kids is the most important thing I do on this campus. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads. Down Mississippi.